Greetings, dear friends, and welcome to the Blue Cube YouTube channel. Continuing our Adobe Animate software training from beginner to advanced. In this video, you will learn how to use the eraser tool and create different shapes. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. The eraser tool is located in the tools panel. To use this tool, we must first create a shape. So, I select the rectangle tool and drag with the left mouse button to draw a rectangle like this. I select the eraser tool again, which is very important in Adobe Animate software. Now I hold down the left mouse button and drag to erase a part of the rectangle. You see that both the stroke and the fill, which is the inner color, are erased. Now I make the eraser tool size smaller and drag again with the left mouse button held down on the shape to erase both the stroke and the fill. However, there is another option here with an icon that looks like a faucet. If this icon is active, it will only erase a part of the shape. If I click on a part of the shape, it will only erase that part. See, I click on the red color and it erases it. This way you can erase different parts of a shape. I deactivate this icon. This time I select the eraser mode icon. I click on it and select the erase normal option. In normal eraser mode, it erases both the fill, which is the inner color of the shape, and the stroke, which is the line around the shape. This time I select Erase Fills. In this mode, if I drag with the left mouse button held down on the shape, it will only erase the inner color like this. You see that the stroke color is not erased at all, only the inner color is erased. I go back here and select the Erase Lines mode. In this mode, the eraser tool only deletes the stroke of the shape and the inner color of the shape is not erased. I come back here again and click. This time I select the Erase Selected Fills option. Now, if I drag the mouse over the shape while holding the left button, it will delete only the selected parts for us and the unselected parts will remain. The reason for this is that in this mode, we must first select a part of the shape. I use the Transform tool to select only this part of the shape and now I select the Eraser tool again. I click on the tool window and here I select the Erase Selected Fills mode again. Now, if I erase like this with the left mouse button held down, it will only erase the selected parts for us and the unselected parts will remain. Just remember that it only erases the fill, which is the inner part of the shape, and it will not erase the stroke even if you select the stroke. I click here again and select the Erase Inside option. In this mode, you see that it only erases the inside parts of the shape. To make it clearer, I create another shape and select the Eraser tool again. Now, in this mode, if instead of dragging we just click on the shape, this tool can work better. We rarely use this option, but this is how it can be used. Now I press Ctrl plus A to select all the shapes and then delete them. I create a new shape again. I select the Eraser tool and select the Normal mode again. The other icon shows the eraser in a diagonal shape. Now, if I select this icon you see that the eraser tool is slanted. So this option is now active. If I click on it again, the slanted mode is deactivated. Now I can erase wherever I want like this. Since the eraser tool is in normal mode, both the fill and the stroke are erased like this. I create another shape and select the eraser tool. Friends, this option is also useful for those who use a stylus on tablets and laptops. Increase the size of the eraser tool from here and erase the parts you want like this. I deactivate this icon. Now here we can choose the type of eraser. For example, I can choose the square mode for my eraser like this. Or I can choose other modes for my eraser from here. I have already mentioned that you can change its size. If I click the plus sign here, I can create a custom eraser for myself. We can define the type of eraser, square or circle. For example, I select the square and I can set its angle and I can also make it narrower or wider like this. If I click OK in this state, it will be saved for me here. Now I can use it whenever I want. If I want to delete it, I select it again and click the delete icon here. If I want to edit it, I can click the edit option here. I delete it. 
If you want to save these settings, you can click the Save Preset option to save these settings for you. If you want to delete the preset, click the Remove Preset option. In Adobe Animate software, the eraser tool settings are very extensive, and we use this tool a lot in animation. There are also a few options here, such as zoom size with stage, which I fully explained in the previous lesson, which zooms based on the size of your stage. This option, friends, must also be active because it coordinates the eraser tool settings with the brush settings. See, for example, here if I set the size to 59, the brush size will also be 59 in the brush section. Exactly the same settings are activated for my brush. But if I deactivate this option and set its size to 200, for example, and now go back to the brush tool or the classic brush, you see that there is no change. And its size remains at 59. I go back to the eraser section and reduce its size. I activate this option again. The erase on active layer option is also for when we have multiple layers. Since I haven't taught you layers yet, I don't want to go into this topic too much. But to show you its application, in this section, I click on this plus icon to create a new layer for me. The color of the new layer is purple. I create another shape like this and change its color. I choose the green color. I select the eraser tool again and set the eraser type to a circle in the tool section. Now, if I delete this part, you see that the eraser erases both the top shape, which is green, and the bottom shape, which is red. But I activate this option, friends, and for example, I select the red shape. Now, if I delete it with the eraser, you can see that it only erases the red shape, but because the top layer is not in selection mode, the shapes inside it are not erased. Okay, I'm deactivating this for now. This option also relates to symbols. We haven't reached that lesson yet. I will definitely teach it later. I select and delete all of these. Now I select the Shapes tool. If I right-click on the rectangle, there are other shapes here, but for now I select the rectangle. A shape is created by holding down the left mouse button and dragging. If I hold down the Shift key, the shape is created proportionally and in fact a square is created. If I don't hold down Shift, I can create a rectangle or square freely. If I hold down the Alt key, the shape is created from its center. If I hold down Shift and Alt together, the shape is created from the center and proportionally. By holding down the left mouse button and moving the mouse like this. Okay, friends, now I don't want to go into the colors and strokes window because it is a very broad topic and I want to teach you colors and strokes in detail in the next lesson. I select another tool called Rectangle Primitive. I draw another square. This tool is a bit different, friends. The difference between this and the previous tool is that, for example, if I select this corner with the selection tool and drag it, I can round the broken corners and apply the changes I want to the shape. Now, if we want to use the eraser and hold down the left mouse button and erase, you see that only the previous rectangles and shapes are erased and this rectangle primitive is not erased, which is another difference between these tools. I hit Ctrl plus Z again to bring the shapes back. This time I select the oval tool which creates circle and oval shapes for us. I color it green and I can draw a circle like this. I can create an oval or circle freely. If I hold down the shift key, I can create a perfect circle. Hold down the alt key to make it larger or smaller from the center. Here again I right click. There is another shape here called oval primitive, which if I select it and draw another circle here. Let me put these in the corner. I'll put the circle here. Friends, the difference between this oval primitive and oval is that if you come and click on the circle with the selection tool, you can create a half circle from this corner and increase or decrease its value. So you can do this with the selection tool and left click in this area. You can also do this from this section. You can also do this from the oval options section. I'm returning it to its previous state. From this side, we also said that it is possible. The other option, friends, is to create a ring mode. The inner radius option from the center creates a ring mode for us like this, which is very interesting. Now, if you want to return the changes to their previous state, click the reset option. I place the shapes in the corner of the image. 
I click on this tool again and select the Polystar tool and create a pentagon. Now let's increase the number of corners from here like this. Now I can create a 9-sided because I entered the number 9 in this box. I erase these shapes and select the Polystar tool again and select Star in the Style section. Now I can easily create a star. I reduce the stroke value a bit. I select the shape and reduce the stroke value. By clicking on the document, I deselect the shape and select Polystar again. If I increase the number of sides from here, I can create a star with a lot of sides. I reduce their number, for example, I choose the number 10 for it. From here, friends, we can come and change the size of the star points, which is between 0 and 1. If it is 0 0.9, it will create a star like this for me. And if it is 0, it will create a star like this. Now we can select each of the shapes with the free transform tool and change their color. Thank you for staying with me until the end of this video. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, subscribe and please like the video. See you later.